Hello. More stiffs. We'll just don't break these. In fact. Maybe. You stop cooking so much. You're being awful sassy right now. Oh, nobody wants to help me. You told me you didn't need my help. I lied. I think you're being sassy for the vlog right now. <laughs> Kind of. Strip it. <laughs> Hi, Dada. Hey. Hey, Dada. 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 Hey, well, hello. So today I thought I would just vlog a few things that I was thinking I needed to just like address or talk about or whatever while I'm busy making English muffins. I'm trying to get them all laid out, ready to cook. And so everyone's outside working and I, it, this is the best time to do this. So I have made so far in regards to sourdough. And again, this is for me, you may not care. Um, so far, today is the 13th, September 13th, 2020. It's Sunday. I have made tortillas, sourdough tortillas. Um, they, not today though. Uh, I, I didn't really like it. It was usable. I turned it into like a flatbread pizza. But as for like being like a tortilla, no, it was not. And then I made sourdough pretzels, which were okay. But when I tried to make them golden brown, like the picture showed it, I ended up over baking and they were hard as a rock by the time they cooled. The ones that I did a little bit less were not near as hard, and if you heat them up in the microwave and you wet them a little bit first, they're not that bad, but if you let them get nice and golden, talk about break a tooth. That's all you're gonna do. Um, I'm not super inclined to do tortillas again, even a different recipe. I'm not inclined to do pretzels again, not right now. I did make buttermilk sourdough biscuits the other day. Um, they were soft and fluffy and they were enjoyable. They were almost like a roll, but it also had butter in it and the buttermilk, which my version of buttermilk is coconut milk. You could even do almond milk or cashew milk. And for every cup, I need I do a tablespoon of vinegar and just let it set for five minutes so and it bakes perfectly fine and it does what you want it to do and I can eat it because I can't have dairy so um those were really good I am at it again with my English muffins though because they never fail me and they're easy they're they're not hard to do but they are hard to mess up. So why not? I'm just gonna keep making them. I need to look into finding another recipe for bread of some sort, but I don't wanna do anything that sort of veers over to using more ingredients than the English muffins require and more calories and carbs or whatever, you know, using more butter or um, I don't know, just making it uh, more of something I would make 
as a special thing, like a roll. And this is just basic bread. It's the sourdough starter, the water. There is a little bit of honey in it in the first step. But anyway, if it's gonna be harder or be more calories, I'm not super inclined to bother with that. I have made cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. Those are really good. I'll play with some other recipes. I am going to try pizza crust in the near future because I believe that I could probably make a pretty easy, decent pizza crust. I have thought about doing pasta. I haven't quite gotten to that level yet. Don't these muffins look so delicious? I have big ones and tiny ones. They're so cute. I have also made... Um, sourdough apple pie. The crust was really good and I will definitely make that again. But if you want to make the perfect apple pie, take your apple and you know, get the core out, chop it into little chunks, saute that in a skillet with butter and let that cook through. It's sizzling and it smells great. Take maybe like a cup of water and mix some flour in it. I use gluten-free flour and just whisk that in it until it dissolves. And then when the apples are starting to get cooked through, maybe not all the way, go ahead and pour that on and sprinkle on some apple pie spice, allspice, cinnamon, whatever, however you want to season that. And maybe just a little bit of salt for the enhancement of flavors. That's gonna thicken up. Oh, don't forget some sugar. I use coconut sugar. But that's perfect and it's going to kind of do that congeal, almost like when you make gravy. And it's going to thicken and they're nice and cooked through. And then by the time that's all done, boom, apple pie filling. And it's not hard. And that stuff in the can is junk and it's full of nasty sugar. So make it yourself, sweeten to taste, you're good to go. And then that sourdough pie crust was really easy. Put that in, that's perfect. I'm gonna do that, I think, for Thanksgiving. That is really good. And then I've harvested a ton of butternut squash that is going, that has gone in the freezer. It's gonna be going into pie and casserole in place of like sweet potato casserole or pumpkin pie because I have so much of it. I've got like three gallon bags full. I had tons of butternut squash that I grew this year. So, um, I'm going to be doing that, but I have planted a whole bunch of new seeds. I just got done, like I said I was going to do. I have beets, radish, carrots, lettuce, kale, mizuna, um, onions, I'm going to pop some garlic in the ground, the cloves to um, grow a, a whole new bulb of garlic. I'm also taking out some stuff that just needs to get out like my strawberry watermelon vine when I got those four giant watermelons. Well it was two 11 pound watermelons and two 22 pound watermelons and after that anything it's tried to grow has been an odd shape and not quite as wonderful. So I think once you get that first initial round of harvest, which is about maybe four watermelons, varying in size from 10 to 20 plus pounds around there, uh, I think the vine just needs to come out. And what I'm gonna do is plant watermelon early spring direct sow, and then after that, maybe like once every few weeks or once a month, just pop another one of each variety here and there on that side of the box that I want it, and then just let it crawl out to the other side in the lane on the other side of the box. That way it's not in my way, and if it goes completely like a jungle, at least it goes out and it's not covering all of my other box area that I need open and choking out other vegetables and plants but that way I just in case something happens to one another one is coming up after it and that I can get more of like a continuous harvest I'm gonna experiment next year with that specifically because I want 
things like even watermelon vines and other plants to be doing things that you would also be doing with like herbs, lettuces, things you're gonna cut, come again, harvest stuff, and root vegetables where you pull it up and it's done. It's a one and done deal. Unless you're leaving it for seeds, you have that one vegetable and you're done. And then you have to come and put another seed in the ground. So instead of just treating specifically root vegetables that in that uh, manner where I'm going to plant some seeds and like two weeks later plant some more seeds or whatever that I treat some of the other plants the same way maybe cucumbers too and I can't go crazy with it because I only have so much space but if I know so much better what I want in there and where I want it I think I have a much better chance of having a whole lot more production and harvest next year than I have this year on basically everything. I I may have said, but I took out the butternut squash vine because I harvested so many and you saw it, I think on the last vlog, it was taking up a lot of space and it was also really starting to wilt and I needed all that space to get all my new seeds in because I'm direct selling them this year. I'm not trying to start them indoors. I don't have any dirt on me and I don't have money to buy it right now. So I'm just direct sowing the seeds that I have and whatever happens, happens. It's just an experiment. Like my entire harvest is banking on whether or not this works from just direct sowing. And it's kind of sad because I don't want to lose anything or like hinder what I could be bringing into the house for us to eat. But it's better than not sowing any seeds because sowing no seeds means nothing to harvest. So I'm not going to do that. And I have direct sowed so many things and gotten so much harvest from just popping seeds in the ground. So I really can't whine at that. I do know it does work, but it is more susceptible to being eaten mainly by direct sowing it and not being mature. So anyway, that is my plan for the near future right now it's tons of seeds are in the ground for fall into winter and I need to go check on the plants at the pond and I need to go take more seeds with me to really just stick a bunch of seeds right next to the water where it's wet and hope to see something happen especially something that can still grow when it gets cold so I'm gonna do that Sam is outside right now fixing our steps on the front. We are gonna build a nice big porch, but right now, no money. Um, and he's also in between jobs, hasn't worked most of this year, so we don't have the funds to bother with paying someone to build a porch that's expensive. It is actually way more expensive than people think it is. So um, anyway, he's building the steps because last week he was coming up the steps and the bottom one under his foot was it was rotten we didn't know and it completely just went out so before somebody hurts themselves really bad like his grandma we are fixing this today so he did have to buy the stuff for that but at least we don't have to break the bank right now and do a whole bunch of work that we can't afford to do so his big butt be breaking steps outside. He's going to have to fix that. Um, I just have to say, though, this year, considering with how messed up everything has been and how odd of a year it is, God has really blessed my garden. And it has done things that I wasn't quite anticipating. Um, I've learned a lot. It may be a suck year for sure, but it has been a year of really like stopping and thinking and considering what's important, why we make choices that we make, thinking about other people, doing things that we never thought we'd have to do. And although all those things have been odd to go through, it has been a good time too, spending time with each other at home considering really what's important to you and I think a great way to sum up 
this year is don't let the harvest of the spiritual lessons that God has for us go to waste. Maybe there's tons of stuff. I could even say this about my own garden that I didn't get the harvest because I didn't get to buy those seeds or I didn't get to start them inside. And the ones that I tried to do, I wasted all my seeds on them, you know, out in the box and they just got eaten and whatever. And they didn't work out, but at least I can harvest as just from Roots and Refuge says, this is my favorite thing. Even if you screw up your harvest, you could still harvest the lesson, which means a lot to me because sometimes I get really burnt out about how this wasn't perfect or this wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it should be. And so now I'm really upset, but I'm thankful that there's some experiences and some learning and harvesting in many ways, spiritually, emotionally, physically, literally in your garden this year that I would not have had if it wasn't for having to stay home and if it wasn't for having to do without some things money-wise just because, well, you know, Sam's not working. So stuff is not exactly what it would normally be. And it's just, it's been an interesting year. But all in all, can we say it's really been a, a bad year? I mean, we, we've been able to eat. We haven't starved. We haven't gone without meals. And I'm thankful that God is still merciful even in a pandemic, even in, God help us, an election year <laughs> in America. And it's been, it's been interesting, but it's not been bad. Do not waste the lesson. I can say that to myself more than anyone. Do not waste the lesson. Harvest the lesson. That is very important to me, and I really appreciate that. So thank you, Jessica, from Roots and Refuge. I've also learned how to sew this year and do sourdough. It's been a very educational year indeed. But um, as for the garden, I'm still harvesting as many seeds as possible and that watermelon vine's about to come out. I have one that's trying to finish ripening and it's a small one. After that, I'm just taking it out. I'm just gonna snip it, let it die. I kind of don't have to take it out because it's not really even in the box, you've seen it. So all I have to do is go down to the base of the plant, snip it, it's gonna dry up and wither away on its own. I have the bait alpha cucumber that's coming up on my trellis. So I'm gonna let that go in my long Japanese and my muncher cucumbers. They're just about dead, but I have left several on and they're getting really big. So as soon as they're big enough to take off to get seeds from, it's gonna maybe be another week. I'm gonna do the same thing, snip, pull those off, let it dry up some, pull it out and so I'll have at least if nothing else because I've got all my other seeds in the ground broccoli Brussels sprouts cauliflower all of that um which will be easier to monitor when it really starts sprouting and growing right now it's pretty pretty empty looking because they're just starting to come up I will at least have some bare space to plant out cabbages like with those bases I planted that I cut off the core, drew roots from, and then planted in the ground. The red one and the regular one are both growing. So I'm just gonna let them go for right now. And then after uh, they get a little bit bigger and they're kind of like crowding each other in the way and it's cooler outside and I don't worry about them like frying and dying like my last one I did, I will carefully separate them with a knife and a cutting board and then I will plant them, you know, out, separate them. I'm also leaving a bunch of stuff right now to flower and give me seeds. Like I just harvested a bunch of basil and made basil pesto, and I'm going to try to get what I can off of it while it's growing the rest of the way until it flowers and then just let it make seeds. Just let it go. And um, that's what I'm trying to do with everything right now. So we're in a weird transition phase where I can't, I haven't been able to start stuff inside, but I have been able to clear out stuff that can come out of the box and just direct sell right after it with fall to winter vegetables. And then continue to work on gathering seeds and getting rid of old vines. But that's it. I just wanted to talk really quick about 
what's going on and then my next vlog I'll just go down the pond and we'll monitor what it looks like now because it's been a week for me since I last went out there and I will see what's going on with the ones that were there and I'll go ahead and take new seeds with me so I'll vlog that and it'll be its own um, its own separate vlog but other than that that's about all that's going on right now so bye this is just a freebie though, don't get too excited. Let's add in really quick the last sewing project that I've done. Um, after I finished Ellie's dress, I took a pair of overalls that I had and I added on some little ruffles on the side that I pleated from some old jeans. So it sort of extended the top of these because honestly it was too narrow. And I extended it I put a little pocket on here and then I stitched this on by using French knot with embroidery floss so the top of this looks so much cuter than it did because it just was missing something but anyway <laughs> random I know bye 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 bye